thank you all for coming. Uh, this is our eighth event here, um, eighth annual award ceremony for um, entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs um, up, um, in our community. And uh, to this point, every one of these has been very successful because of you and the entrepreneurs that we are honoring. And I thank you all for coming. Um, our first speaker here is someone who is a champion of, of entrepreneurship and, and of uh, the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship and also a champion of uh, Bristol Community College and that, that is our president, Dr. Jack Sprager. Well, good evening everyone and welcome. Uh, this is always an exciting event in, the, in our annual calendar as we promote uh, and honor and recognize creativity and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, that's what we're all about and uh, it really is special and uh, it's good to see students of becoming, it's hard to teach entrepreneurship, I think, but uh, uh, we do our best, right? Um, the, uh, wanted to mention to you as you drove in, some of you may be new to the campus and uh, we're boasting about the construction that you saw, let alone the inconvenience, because not only do you have to kind of wind your way to get here, but we have uh, frost heaves on the road as well, so it makes for an enjoyable or exciting ride in. Uh, but just so you know why you were so inconvenienced, uh, uh, you may have noticed that the big building is going up, our uh, science and health building, uh, and it's something special because, <clears throat> talking about entrepreneurship, it's a a net zero building, it's going to be platinum lead. It's the only one that's size like this in the Northeast. And uh, it's already, this kills me, uh, we, we haven't even built it yet and we've gotten four or five award, national awards uh, because of it. Uh, so I guess they're taking our word that it's going to do all these good things, uh, uh, which is good. Uh, but it's going to be net zero. And then, uh, and the state of the art, uh, instructional materials in health and science. Uh, it's good to have our students uh, train on what they'll find out in the, uh, in the marketplace uh, after they get jobs out there. So we wouldn't work, have them working on Model Ts and then not be prepared for what they find out in the marketplace. Then the second uh, reason for that inconvenience uh, you suffered, you may have noticed on the right-hand side, opposite the building, is a solar canopy. Um, and the, the parking lot's already existed there for a lot, many years, but we've put now a solar canopy all over, uh, over those parking lots. Now this blows my mind too. I, uh, I hope you are ready to uh, understand that this solar canopy will provide 50% of the, of the energy for the campus, 50%. Uh, and so proud of that. <laughs> And, and we've got many, um, uh, many awards for it and uh, also many benefits that'll come. Uh, the electrical rate uh, uh, is, is locked in, it's 11 cents. Now we're paying, people in our homes we're paying 13, 14, 15 cents. So we already locked in 11 cents. Uh, and uh, the best part is 20 years, 11 cents. I mean, that's amazing. I, uh, so we're very, very proud of what that will do. So I hope you agree that the, the sideways uh, zigs and zags and the frost heaves are worth it to get here to learn about, uh, to have us have this building uh, uh, constructed and the canopy, uh, the solar canopy as well. It's, it's really special. But I'm talking too much because we have to get to the uh, purpose of this meeting and the purpose of this event and it's to celebrate our entrepreneurs and uh, in the region, in the community, and uh, the example that they set for all of us is really inspiring. And uh, so I'm gonna turn it back uh, to Bill, uh, no, to April Lynch. I want to uh, I end, that gives me a chance to uh, applaud April for her great leadership in our ACE. Uh, and that's the uh, academic <laughs> entrepreneurship. So I'm going to turn it back to April and uh, let's uh, celebrate the great things that you're going to hear about uh, this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, April. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. 
thanks for coming. I wanted to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's April Lynch. I'm an instructor here in the business division. I teach a number of business courses, and as President Sprague just said, I'm also involved with the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship. And so for those of you who may not be aware of what we do, um, I wanted to just spend a couple of seconds here letting you know some of you I'm working with right now, some of you, you hear me day after day in my classes, so I apologize. But for those of you that don't know, um, the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship is here to help people um, start businesses. We have a number of students on a number of campuses that are interested in um, starting their own business, and we help them write their strategic business plan, help them find financing, give them whatever training is necessary, and we've really worked with students over a number of disciplines, so it's not just business students, it's business, it's students from all of our divisions, and even within the community have utilized our services. So um, that's enough about us. If anyone who would like to talk with me about that more later this evening, I'd be happy to speak with you. But tonight we're here to honor some local businesses. Um, what I wanted to tell you is we've got four winners here this evening that we're going to be talking with in a couple of minutes. And these are entrepreneurs that have already realized their dream. They've already realized that it takes hard work and dedication to start their businesses. And they've all been dedicated to their mission in growing their companies. And so for that, I say congratulations and I'm happy to have you here tonight. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Richard Bassett, who was nice enough to um, oversee the events evening's events, and he's from Jay Marshall, and so I will let you, without further ado, thank, thank you. you April. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, I am not Joe Marshall. I just happen to be lucky enough to work with him. Uh, Joe is unfortunately unable to make it tonight, but he wishes he could be here. As uh, most of you who do know Joe, he treats BCC as really a gem in the Fall River community. It's something that a lot of kids utilize and more should. So I think it's really something that's good. And without further ado, let's talk about awards because I think that's why we're all here tonight. The Developing Entrepreneur Award. The entrepreneur in this category will be part of a relatively new company in existence for 10 years or less or will currently be in the process of launching their products or service. The Developing Entrepreneur will be judged primarily on the company's ability to fulfill in the need of the marketplace, locally or globally, creativity of product or service and potential for future growth. This year's developing entrepreneur is Derval and Deborah Tavares of Aquabotics Technology. Aquabotics was founded in 2011 by Derval and Deborah Tavares. Aquabotics is a farver based company that develops technology used by underwater inspection and exploration. Their products are currently being used by government agencies law enforcement, officials, colleges and universities, aquariums, as well as by boulders with a thirst for deep sea exploration, exploration, to name just a few. Their advanced technology has quickly given them a leadership position in the market and as a result, their products are currently being deployed in over 30 countries, all started in Fall River. The company's commitment to social responsibility is evident through their product donations to nonprofit organizations, their support of education and their recycling efforts. They have experienced much growth and success in their first few years of business and their dedication to education and continuous product development will ensure their place as a leader in the future. Without further ado, let's welcome Draval and Deborah Tavares. So um, thank you very much on behalf of Aquabotics and especially for the people that work at Aquabotics that made it successful. Thank you. Uh, I just want to just sort of just briefly tell you a little about Aquabotics, a little more in depth. We make uh, underwater vehicles, underwater robotics. And the, uh, the thing why we do that, it came from the passion of the sea and technology and trying to get people to know more about what's underneath the water. 
when we founded the company it was based upon three P's. Uh, people, uh, planet, and profit. Or a business, we're gonna make money at the end of the day. And we, when we did this, it's about treating and letting people know more about the environment, letting people know more about what's underneath the water. And we always felt that if people know what the seas have to offer, they will be better caretakers of that uh, sea and the waters that are underneath there. So on behalf of Aquabotics, thank you. That's great. The next award is the Cornerstone Entrepreneur Award. The entrepreneur in this category will be part of a well-established company in existence for more than 10 years. They will own a company that has routinely, routinely utilized a solid business practice, has acquired a reputable position within the region's economic environment. The Cornerstone Entrepreneur will be judged primarily on the company's successful past performance and on its potential for future sustainability. This year's Cornerstone Entrepreneur Award winner is Richard and Megan Ramiro of Mirasol's Cafe. Mirasol's Cafe, started and owned by Richard and Megan Ramiro, is a Latin-influenced coffee house offering a number of full-flavored beverages and unique menu items, all served in a casual atmosphere. I know it's a rave in our office. The, elect the eclectically designed space is an inviting location for local consumers, business people, and college students alike. Their products have a cult-like following, and their regulars are known to drive upwards of 45 minutes mm -hmm. for one of their chippies, a proprietary blended ice coffee beverage, which Andy in my office says you could sell for twice as much. <laughs> Over the past decade, Mirasols has become an integral part of the community and has forged relationships with members throughout sponsorships, donations, and charitable work. They have a solid business model and have experienced steady growth that can be witnessed with their always full and lively yet relaxed cafe. Without further ado, let's welcome this year's Cornerstone Entrepreneur Award winner, Richard and Megan Ramiro. Well, um, 10 years, I can, still can't believe that it's been 10 years. Um, I haven't prepared anything really, I just wanted to go off the cuff here, but um, 10 years, it's been a lot of hard work, um, a lot of great customers, we've seen a lot of people grow in, coming into the cafe. We're looking for the next 10 years. Um, and even hopefully beyond that. So this is a great honor for us, which really appreciate it. And for all the entrepreneurs out there starting out or continuing, just keep up the hard work and you know, you're the backbone to, to America and to society. So go for it. <laughs> Next, the Benevolent Entrepreneur Award. The entrepreneur in this category will be regarded as someone who has made positive contributions to the well-being of the region's population and or environment. This socially conscious entrepreneur may have attained this distinction as a result of the type of product or service that they offer. The clients that they serve, the compassion that they show to employees, or through their own personal acts of kindness and community involvement. This year's Benevolent Entrepreneur Award winner is Pete Souza and Danny Souza of Mesa 21 Restaurant. <laughs> Mesa 21 has become a popular meeting look place, and I think you guys know the rest, so I'll get out of the way. Thank you. Um, my family has been in the restaurant business as, as long as I can remember. Um, and everyone that starts their own business knows it's, it's long hours, a lot of work. Um, and 
my parents taught me that at an early age. Um, unfortunately, our restaurant last year caught fire. Um, and basically, with the help of the community, we're ready to open again in probably like four weeks. Thank you. My brother and I do a lot of charity work, and uh, it's very evident that everything you put in comes out. Um, and my parents instilled that in us at an early age. So I'd like to thank the whole community who stepped up for us in the last year. Uh, it's been a very difficult time, but thank you. It's a great story of people overcoming tragedy and continuing to succeed. The last award this year is the Sustainable, Entrep Sustainable Entrepreneur Award. The entrepreneur in this category will be judged on their ability to facilitate positive change through the introduction of new, sustainable products and services to newer existing markets. Their products and services should create or open opportunities for sustainability among conscious consumers and in general should encourage efforts of society to support sustainable lifestyles. This year's Cornerstone Entrepreneur Award, I'm sorry, this year's Sustainable Entrepreneur Award is, April's looking at me, is Scott Peets, Peets Farm. Peets Farm, lo located in North Dartmouth, Math, is a veteran-owned and family-operated sustainable farm. Scott Peet began the farm after his return home from serving overseas with a distinct, uh, distinctly different mission to create food products that are free from harsh petroleum-based chemicals that are raised using sustainable farming practices. It is these practices that allow him to offer locally grown nutrient-dense food opposed to the traditionally offered products in today's retail markets. Not only are his products more nutritionally sound, but his farming methods allow him to heal the land while maximizing the yield per an acre that traditional farming practices uh, cannot, making this model one to be emulated for the next generation of farming. His customers would tell you that his dedication to delivering quality pro products is evident in every animal he raises and every product he offers. He is passionate about the food movement and routinely offers education about sustainable farm methods and what they mean for providing the community with health food choices. Without further ado, let's welcome Scott Peets, this year's award winner for the Sustainable Entrepreneur Award. BCC student. Huh? BCC student. BCC and a BCC student. Congratulations. Very proud of you. Let's take a picture here. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, this is definitely an honor. I mean, a lot of the local businesses already mentioned, I mean, I feel like I'm the small guy amongst giants. Um, of course, I want to thank my family, my wife, and my awesome son, Mason, always helping me out on the farm. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, so this is a great you know, honor to receive an award and, and, and to be you know, acknowledged for the efforts that I've made. Um, but I definitely have to thank my awesome professors, a bunch of them in the audience, uh, Professor Corvin, <coughs> Professor Wood, uh, even uh, Professor Lynch. Um, I'm still in the sustainable ag program and I should be finishing this semester, but without their encouragement and uh, the stuff that they've taught me, I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't have came back from deployment with the idea to start a farm. Um, you know, sustainability and quality food and all this stuff happened because I came here and I opened up my mind to, to everything that's going on. Um, so I wanted to do something, you know, to give back to my community and producing quality, healthy food is the path I chose. Um, the only other thing I want to say is, is I encourage everybody to support all of us local businesses. You know, it's easy to go to the big box stores or the huge chains, 
and pay us, you know, a smaller price. But when you start looking at the the benefits and and the the hidden value in a lot of our local product, you know, it's it's profound. You know, a lot of it's invisible, but it's out there. So I encourage everybody to, you know, support local business and keep us going. Thank you so much. Okay, that was a great speech. Thank you for your service. And now we're gonna be introducing the keynote speaker. The keynote speaker is Jim Stevens, founder of CEO Gifts to Give. If you're not familiar with Gifts to Give, it's pretty powerful. Founder and CEO Jim Stevens brings 30 years of corporate experience and a passion for building community to Gifts to Give. A serial entrepreneur, which I love that term by the way, April, that's excellent. A serial entrepreneur and marketing professional, Jim started and operated his own import and export business. Manage, manage a subsidiary of publicly held specialty realtor and held senior executive positions with Ronco Teleproducts, Rayovac, Max Factor, Halston, and the Revlon Corporation. Jim supported the Massachusetts Special Olympics for over 20 years as an advocate and active coach. For the past 10 years, he has become a venture philanthropist, connecting thousands of adults to giving and service and tens of thousands of children to tangible philanthropy, philanthropy and big citizenship. Jim's experience has uniquely positioned him to create Gifts to Give, a sustainable, low-cost business model which is effectively run by volunteer management and a giving and caring community. Gifts to Give addresses childhood poverty by repurposing and recycling merchandise. With over 12,000 student volunteers and 4,000 adult volunteers, Gifts to Give serves those in need spanning from Cape Cod to Rhode Island. Let's welcome keynote speaker Jim Stevens. Good afternoon. Please be patient with me. I'm just getting over the flu. I'm not contagious, but if I fall over, get my body to a cushion it as fast as you can. Um, I've got a video. It's two and a half minutes long. It's hot off the press. It was done by a terrific group of grad students at Boston University at the School of Communications called Ad Lab. And it's to help explain philanthropy, but it's directed to seven-year-olds. So I beg your indulgence. Can we play this, please? I am Roman, and I am eight. I started volunteering when I was five years old. My name is Hunter and I am 10 years old. I started volunteering in second grade. My name is Paige and I'm eight years old. I feel good about volunteering here because it's helping others. I feel really every day of work I get to give, I feel good. My favorite part about volunteering is knowing that I'm helping someone get what they need and have a better life. Well, I think it's kind of cool being here because I get to like see new things and meet new people. To help others, you just really have to put effort into it and you don't really need to use money. My favorite part about volunteering is that I get to help other people. Because if I were in need, I, I would want to be helped. Helping the community is good. 
from the mouth of babes. My name is Jim Stevens. I'm a son of the greatest generation. My parents lived through the Great Depression and World War II. I truly am a son of the greatest generation. I'm an original baby boomer. I find myself at 65 years old embarrassed by the legacy of my generation. Global warming, terrorism, Wall Street, Congress, the Senate, General Electric not paying taxes, race and class, child poverty, my personal favorite. In America, there are 24 million children living in poverty. 24 million children living in households earning less than $17,000 a year. And then it gets worse. There's another 24 million children living in low-income families, working poor, $30,000 for a family of three. That's 48 million children in America live in poor or low-income households. That's one out of every two children. In the developed world, the United States has the second highest percentage of childhood poverty, right behind Romania. No joke. When I was a student 50 years ago, students changed the world. We ended a war in Vietnam. We impeached a standing president of the United States. We pushed and achieved civil rights legislation, equal rights legislation, women's rights legislation. When I was a student 50 years ago, 60% of people of color in America couldn't vote, and women didn't have the same rights. I look around now, 50 years later, and not much has changed. When I was a student, we went to the moon. I'm serious. We put two guys in a tube and shot it into outer space. And the guys came back alive. It was amazing. I had heroes. I look around today and I see most students connected to Facebook. I see two kinds of kids today. I see kids that are privileged, and I see kids that are not privileged. And they have one thing in common. They're both clueless. I believe that the privileged children have no idea how lucky they are. No idea. And I believe that the underprivileged children have no idea the choices they have. But I'm getting off of my topic. I'm a social entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, and a philanthropist. And I just wanted to get a little academic because I'm in the halls of academia. What's an entrepreneur? What's entrepreneurship? It's a process of starting a business or other organization. An entrepreneur develops a business plan, acquires the human and other required resources, and is fully responsible for its success or failure. Entrepreneurship operates within an entrepreneurship ecosystem. Entrepreneurs are leaders willing to take risks and exercise initiative, taking advantage of market opportunities by planning, organizing, and employing resources, often by innovating new or improving existing ideas. More recently, the term entrepreneurship has extended to include specific mindsets resulting in initiatives, social entrepreneurship, political entrepreneurship, and knowledge entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship ranges in scale from solo, part-time projects to large-scale undertakings. Successful entrepreneurs have the ability to lead a business in a positive direction by proper planning and to adapt to changing environments and understanding their own strengths and weaknesses. And we saw some perfect examples of that today. Philanthropy, what is philanthropy? It's a word from the Greek, means love of humanity. 
in the sense of cares, caring, nourishing, developing, and enhancing what it is to be human. The most conventional modern definition is private initiatives for public good, focusing on quality of life. How these two things, entrepreneurship and philanthropy, played themselves out for me. I went to, to work in corporate America right after school and I had a sterling career. I had a degree in uh, English and I became a sales and marketing man. But I worked in a corporation. Someone told me if I wanted to develop a skill set, I needed to be trained. And I thought that made a lot of sense. So I set up interviews with three major companies, Colgate Palmolive, Playtex, and Revlon. And I went on three interviews to be a salesman for one of these three companies. And the Playtex interview was in a coffee shop on the New Jersey Turnpike. The uh, Colgate Palmolive interview was in the lobby of a Holiday Inn in um, Ossining, New York. And the Revlon interview was in a suite at the Waldorf Astoria over a $140 lunch with a bottle of wine. So I immediately took the job with Revlon. <laughs> and I had a really interesting career. But then I got married, had some children, and started to understand that I couldn't be the kind of father and husband I wanted to be and be a corporate man, a man in the gray flannel suit. That the corporation had demands on me that were really unrealistic. And I was making a terrific living in my early 20s. I was making a lot of money in my early 20s. But I was also making millions and millions of dollars for a corporation. And I started thinking, this is not conducive I was never home. I was gone four and five nights a week. I was traveling all over when I came home. I was tired. My kids were growing up. I wasn't there. And I thought, I've got to do something. So I became an entrepreneur by accident. I started complaining. And I get fired. And I'm sitting at home thinking, what can I do? And I came up with some interesting ideas and I hit it just right. And I was very, very lucky. But I had this basic education and I had this basic training from a major corporation. And with those two things, I managed to raise a family and have a wonderful living. And I was able to retire at 35 years old. And I stayed home and raised and, and finished raising my sons and started having grandchildren and then 10 years ago at 55, I came out of retirement because I looked around and I saw all these things I talked about at the beginning of my talk. And I've always been a philanthropist. I've always, since I started making money, write checks. I always was interested in helping people. I wrote a check to my church. I wrote a check to the Boys and Girls Clubs. Anybody that asked me for help, I would write a check. And I started to realize that I was part of the problem. That what I really needed to do was take a hard look around and see what was going on. And I came up with uh, the ultimate entrepreneurial idea for me. And that was, and I'm on a secret mission and I'm gonna announce it right now. Because everybody knows gifts to give for giving away thousands and thousands of pounds of stuff to poor and homeless children, which we do. But that's not my mission. My mission is to reposition philanthropy. That's my mission. And I have to do it by tricking everybody. So what happened was I came up with a set of metrics that I learned in, I learned in college. It was really interesting as a sophomore in a business class. And I had seven criteria. I wanted to develop a nonprofit that was so low cost it would be crazy that never ever took a government grant or a state grant or a city grant, that never had a payroll, you had to work for free or you couldn't work, had to be totally transparent, 
everything had to be transparent, had to have hard, definable metrics, what were the goals, and we had a report on achieving them, that it had to be franchisable, like Dunkin' Donuts, and that it ultimately had to pay for itself. Those were my seven metrics. So six years ago, I set out looking for oh, a city to start in to build my model. And I looked, I had some experience previous to doing this, and I realized that a nonprofit startup could not start in a major city and have any impact. It was just too big. And if my issue was to reposition philanthropy and attack child poverty, then I had to get out of the big cities and I started looking at gateway cities. And to my amazement, there were 700 gateway cities in America. Excuse me, and I'm a Massachusetts boy, so I looked at Massachusetts and there are 11 gateway cities. So I made a list, Lawrence, Lowell, Haverhill, New Bedford, Fall River, Brockton, Chicopee, Springfield, Holyoke. And I went and started talking to mayors. And boy, was that an eye opener. Oh my God. I talked to seven mayors before I quit. I could not find political leadership. So I flipped a coin and decided to open in Lawrence. And as I'm signing a lease in Lawrence, true story, six years ago, the EPA came out and condemned the lot for PCBs. And the next day, as I'm talking to my lawyer about this bad lease I just signed, the mayor and the superintendent of schools get indicted. So I check Lawrence off my list and I go down to New Bedford. And I met the mayor in New Bedford, I asked him was there any uh, pending criminal investigations and he said no. And uh, Gifts to Give was started five years ago in New Bedford. And it's a really simple, I mean, the idea, you talk about entrepreneurs coming up with creative ideas. Well, that's important too. But sometimes just taking what's existing and maybe being more efficient is better. There is nothing I'm doing that's inventive or innovative. Every single thing I'm doing has been done before. I'm not that smart. And, and the basic premise is really simple. Uh, five years in, last year, um, we have a, we had a 30,000 square foot factory in the south end of New Bedford, an old Berkshire Hathaway mill, and they tore that building down and we recently moved to a Kushnet to the original Titleist golf ball factory. So Gifts to Give is a 50,000 square foot space that's a recycling center. We collect 20,000 pounds a week of used things, clothes, books, shoes, toys. We have 55 employees, no one's paid, seven full-time, the rest part-time, and our workers are children, a thousand children a month come to the factory, 250 kids a week, punch in, get a name tag, and go to work. And the work in the factory is processing the donations. Do we keep it, don't we keep it? Then shoes go to shoes, toys go to toys, clothes go to clothes, puzzles and games go to puzzles and games. And three and four year olds manufacture 100 feet a week of birthday wrapping paper. And four, five and six year olds clean 1,000 pounds of toys a week. And seven, eight and nine year olds make play worlds. And preteens and teens sort books by age and clothes by size and gender. And on the flip end, we have an online shopping cart like Amazon.com. And we have 220 agencies on the South Coast. I talked about 24 million children in America living in poverty. I can't get my mind around 24 million. On the South Coast, between Newport, Rhode Island and the Upper Cape, there's 45,000 children living in poverty. And I'll ask you what these 45,000 children did wrong. Nothing. So to help these kids, we process all this stuff. We have this online shopping cart, 220 agencies. 
that work with these kids every day, shelter workers, social workers, school nurses. In New Bedford, there's 13,000 kids in the school district. 570 are homeless, go to school every day. There's 21 school nurses. The 21 nurses know who every single kid is by name. And they go online and they write an order for a gift package. I've got a 10-year-old boy with size 12 clothes, needs a week's worth of clothes, a book pack, a, a toy pack, and a winter coat. And oh, by the way, his mother needs a stroller for the one-year-old. And last year, 12,000 students volunteered, 4,000 adults, so 16,000 volunteers, and we were able to process enough stuff to help 9,000 local children for free. And we spent less than $170,000 doing it. So I'm um, very excited to be here. I don't ordinarily do this. Uh, I met this remarkable woman named April. And I said no to April a couple of times. And April said to me that I had a responsibility because what she was trying to do was connect students to entrepreneurship and to philanthropy. So thank you very much. I'm going to give you all an open invitation, giftstogive.org. We're open every day except Sunday. It's a drop-in. You can come in anytime you want and take a tour, and you can drop in anytime you want and volunteer. And just for your edification, uh, we used to reject adult clothes and small housewares because we can't give them to children. But about seven months ago, we opened up a thrift store on Saturday, and we're selling that stuff now. We're selling pants for four dollars and tops for two bucks, and we're paying about seventy-five percent of our budget from our Saturday thrift store. So come to a cushion shop. So thank you very much. I appreciate you letting me talk about what we're doing. I'd like to thank Jim, um, <clears throat> who's proven that entrepreneurship is multifaceted and that companies with community mission can achieve great success. I'd also like to congratulate all of tonight's winners on their individual accomplishments and encourage them to keep up their hard work because their efforts are being recognized by and appreciated by members of our community. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of you who made this event possible. At this time, I'd like to recognize the efforts of our event planning class, so if you guys wouldn't mind standing up. Some of them are probably still hard at work on the other side. Are they here? They're all over there working. So let's give them a round of applause on that. I'd also like to uh, thank all of our student volunteers who helped from brochure creations to event planning, all aspects of the event management process. And I'd like to give special thanks to uh, Doris Perryman and John Bruce Ornston, who assisted and guided their students through many of the tasks required of them this, and helped me out tremendously. So thank you very much. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to thank our culinary department, Chef Carismo, Chef Martinez, Chef Hoban, who are all on the other side hard at work, um, and all the students that have been working so hard preparing and staging the dinner that we're about to enjoy. And of course, our uh, Master of Affairs, I'd like to thank Richard, Richard for helping us so eloquently with the awards this evening. And so before I, I uh, turn it over, I'd like to just turn it over to Bill Berardi, our Dean for Division Three. He has a couple of closing comments he'd like to say, and then we can get to it. All right, thank you. she wants me to say, she said it all. A <laughs> uh, couple of things. Um, first, our president, uh, Dr. Sprager, was a little bit modest when he was talking about that building, but that building, as wonderful as it is, is also going to have his name on it. <laughs> and I can say that that is well deserved. Um, Jim, you said you were an original a baby boomer. Um, I want to tell you I'm more original than you are. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I am more original than you are. 
And finally, um, I want to reiterate one of the things that Scott had said, and that is uh, we need to support our local entrepreneurs. They work very hard. Not only did they work very, or do they work very hard, but they also took a risk. And that risk ought to be rewarded by our support. So, sir, thank you for your service. Thank you for your comments. And I congratulate all of the entrepreneurs that were um, received awards today. Uh, keep up the good work. We will be here, as you will be here, um, again next year. I invite you all to come. Um, one final thank you to April for the outstanding job she has done. And uh, with that, <laughs> she's turning a little red over here, but that's okay. <laughs> with that, I'll say let's enjoy what we have out on the other side of that wall for you. Thank you for coming, and uh, you're welcome back next year. Thank you very much.